The YouTube team keep it clean. Uh, the Ravens had what sounded like an exit interview uh, for this season since they have been uh, carefully escorted out of the playoffs due to uh, a number of things that we don't even need to get into. Um, and it featured a lot of different players. It featured the likes of Rashad Bateman, uh, who was just really excited about the future. Um, featured Hollywood Brown, uh, who talked about how he was really disappointed uh, in himself. Um, he is disappointed, even though he got a thousand yards, he's still disappointed in how things turned out. He feels like the, uh, the offense, they didn't reach their potential. They didn't. And even though they didn't reach their potential, it still was some good times, some good spots, but they didn't reach their potential. Uh, and a lot of that, uh, was with him himself. Uh, he is his own biggest critic. Uh, and he did talk about the drops that he got to come down with those. And it's true. He has to. Hollywood, he just scraped over a thousand yards, but if you even cut his drops in half from this year, uh, then he's he's at twelve hundred, at least twelve hundred, and probably more. Uh, but if you if you take away all the drops, he <laughs> probably like thirteen, fourteen hundred. Um, they have been big. It's been some big drops and some big moments. And if I know he said that in this offseason, he wants to work on getting bigger, stronger and faster. And that's cool. And he did get those things uh, this past offseason, especially the stronger part, um, because a lot of times early on in the season, um, he would actually be initiating contact and going to contact. And I was like, oh, OK, let's go. Um, it seemed like that slowed down a little bit toward the end of the end of the year. Um, but biggest thing you got to work on is just catching with his hands and just really focusing on catching the ball before anything. Um, that's is it, just so huge, and it would really take his game up to another level. I know he said he also wants to work on uh, contested catches uh, as well. Um, this presser also featured uh, Kevin Zeitler, who's getting ready to be 32, but he said he has no plans on retiring whatsoever. So I'm like, okay, cool. Hey, it's nice to have somebody, some consistency along the offensive line. Uh, Kevin Zeitler, it looked like our guard positions are set with Kevin Zeitler and um, Ben Cleveland. Uh, but a position that is not necessarily set is at center. Uh, this presser had Bradley Bozeman. And it's crazy because before, when he first got introduced, I was telling my wife, I was like, all right, listen to this guy. Uh, because he sounds like Drewski. When Drewski's doing his old little country impersonation and joking around, that's, that's what he said. He sounded just like Bradley Bozeman. So Bradley Bozeman came up and he started speaking. And I was thinking like, hold up. He, he doesn't sound like himself. He sounds like he just sounded down. And at first I was just initially listening, but then I started watching too. And I was looking at him and I was like, oh man, I said, he, he, I think he's getting ready to cry. And a couple, mo couple minutes went past and then he was talking, he was saying something, then he paused. He paused and you could see his face and you could hear it in his voice. You could hear it in his breath. He just he just started breaking down. And oh, ooh, that was tough to watch, man. That was a tough one. Um, but he was talking about how much he loved Baltimore. He, he loved the Ravens. He loved the uh, the city. He just loved everything about the team, the organization and all that. Um, and, and he thanked them. And usually when, when players thank the organization, it's not a set in stone. It's not an end all be all. But. They, that's, their, that's their way of giving fans a heads up, uh, uh, giving media a heads up, like, hey, this could be it. Could also be a little contract negotiation tactic, too. Saying, all right, well, thanks, thanks for everything. Uh, I'll stay if you're going to up my offer, but if not, thanks for everything. But it just sounded like he knows that this, this could be it. And it could be. It could be. Now, I would love for them to keep uh, Bradley Bozeman. Don't want it to be another Ryan Jensen situation uh, to where we just we are centerless for a while and we just keep searching for different centers and nothing is working out. But even if he does leave, I think the Ravens will still be straight with Tristan Colon Castillo. But we'll see what happens um, with that offensive line. Um, somebody else who sounded like it could be a wrap for them was Brandon Williams. Brandon Williams, he, um, they asked him about his future with the Ravens, if he wants to come back. He said, yeah, of course I want to come back, but that's up to them upstairs. And whenever a player refers to them upstairs and they sort of deflect it to the front office, um, that, that, that's kind of a little indicator too. So Brandon Williams, again, he's another one. We'll see what happens with him. And Ravens got a lot of 
free agents coming up, so they got a lot of decisions to make. So Eric DaCosta, as always, is going to have to be, he's going to be very, very busy uh, this offseason. Um, somebody else who spoke, uh, well, well, he didn't actually speak in the media today, but he tweeted. Um, and that was Deshaun Elliott. Now, we know Deshaun Elliott, uh, he, was having, he was having a decent year this year. Um, he dealt with an injury. I think it was a hamstring injury. I forgot what it was. And he was out for a couple of games. And he came back with all this energy against the Chargers. Oh, and he, you could see the difference. I think that's when he got his first interception as well. Um, then he was back for a little bit. Then he got hurt. And then he was out for the rest of the season. Um, so he, he tweeted, uh, regardless of what happens next, I love being in Baltimore. I love my brothers I got to play with while I was here. The organization for giving me a chance, injury after injury, the culture, the fans. Been a blessing to be here. Just the start of a long career. Never quit. So, uh, with Deshaun Elliott, um, it sounds like he knows, like, yeah, this, this could be it. This could be a wrap for his time in Baltimore. And I'm sure um, he wanted the team to have the ultimate success, of course. But at the same time, he had to be watching while he was out, watching Brandon Stevens take his role. And they are two completely different type of safeties. They uh, play the game in a completely different way from each other. But that's where he was playing at. He was that free safety for the Ravens. And now he may not be, he might not have that role anymore. He may not even be on a team moving forward. So we'll see what happens with all of that. Now, um, somebody who uh, a lot of Ravens fans... They wonder if he's going to be back next year. That somebody is Greg Roman. And I feel like with, uh, with most Ravens fans, uh, it's an extreme for one case or the other. Some feel like Greg Roman absolutely has to go. There is no way that he should be back. He needs to be fired. He needs to be gone ASAP. Then there's others that feel like, nope, Greg Roman needs to stay. He doesn't need to go anywhere. This offense, despite losing this, that, and the third, they have still been competitive. They've still been in games. They've still been one of the top-ranked offenses in the league. Greg Roman needs to stay. He is not the problem. And whichever way you feel about it uh, is fine because, again, we all got our viewpoints on this whole thing with the Ravens. Now, me, y'all know, I, I expect – Greg Roman to stay um, But with him leaving uh, Or if he does leave Get fired or whatever I think the issue goes beyond Just Greg Roman I think the issue is just The Ravens philosophy Period um, Just the way that they do things Period Especially when it comes to the offense Just the way that they view the offense The way that they value the offense the, the, There needs to be an increased value On offensive production on the use of all these players that they have they need to be used to their strengths consistently the 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 coordinator the coaches they need to be in the flow of the game consistently they just they need better rhythm consistently and that's one of the biggest areas where the ravens lack and they come up short uh it's that consistent crucial critical coaching and it just it, it needs to be a lot better than it has been with Greg Roman. Say, for instance, he gets fired. OK, cool. So what's going to happen next is, is Harbaugh. If, if Harbaugh is in control of hiring whoever's next, I would expect us to be having the same conversation a year from now. Same conversation. About all oh, the offensive coordinator, this is that. What's wrong with our offense? What's wrong with our offense? I expect it to be the same thing. This is why this offseason is so important that EDC and Bashadi they step in big time. Big time. Now, I don't, again, I don't expect Harbaugh to be gone. I don't expect Roman to be gone. I don't expect Wink to be gone. I don't expect any of these guys to be gone. I don't because I feel like with the injuries, all three of them will get a pass. So as far as Greg Roll, if they get rid of one, I just feel like it's going to be the same cycle again until real significant change is made. But uh, some, somebody that really changed the Ravens franchise and really brought them significant change was one Lamar Jackson. And in a surprise, Lamar Jackson, uh, he was part of the press conference today. 
It was a nice surprise seeing Lamar. Didn't expect to see him. Uh, they didn't even put him in a thumbnail. I was, I was, I was shocked about that. But anyway, um, Lamar Jackson, he was asked about Greg Roman. And I was very happy. With, I think it was Charles Walker that asked it. I don't remember off the top of my head. But let, let, let's just read what Lamar had to say about one Giro. He said, uh, Greg Roman has been great for us. He's a great coach. We're glad he's here. But I can't get into that. I don't really know what they have going on upstairs. I don't talk about stuff like that, but he's been good for us, though. So somebody asked if um, if Lamar feels like Giro is the guy. If Giro is a good fit for them at offensive coordinator and whatnot. Now, we know Lamar. Lamar, he won't do it to players. Um, and he will be reluctant to do it to a coach, even though with Greg Roman, he did go on Rich Eisen's show and said, hey, they know what we're doing. They know what plays we're running. They know the offense. He did say that before. Um, but overall, he's been pretty hesitant when it's coming. He doesn't throw people under the bus very often. And in fact, that's the only time I can even remember him doing such a thing. But um, Lamar, he said that Greg Roman's been great for us. He's a great coach. We're glad that he's here. Gave him a lot of praise. But then... After giving him that praise, he didn't say, oh, hey, Giro, that's our coach. That's our guy. We, we love Giro in the building. No, no, no. He said, that's them. That's the front office. I, 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 don't, I don't talk into that. I can't get into that. That's them. So he deflected it to Eric DaCosta, Steve Bashotti, and them. And with that, and of course with Hollywood's comments about the offense not really reaching its peak, not – um hitting their potential. It just, and it seemed like for a while now that there is just a disconnect between Greg Roman and the players from the Ravens. But back to Lamar Jackson's comment, because sometimes when you read stuff, you don't get the same, like, it's like when you're texting somebody. Uh, when you read it, it you, you just, you don't always get the, uh, the gist of it, even though this is pretty self-explanatory, but let's listen to Lamar and how he said it. The season doesn't end the way you want it to. There's speculation about, you know, could there be changes in, in some of the coaching staff? From, from your perspective, would you like to continue working with Greg Roman and, and his staff? You know, Coach Greg Roman has been great, you know, for us for the last couple of years, you know, since he stepped in. Um, he's been a great coach. And we, we glad, you know, he's glad he's here. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I can't get into that. I don't really know what they got going on upstairs. You know, you got to talk to them. And he said those guys about stuff like that. That's not, that's not nothing I can say. You know, I don't talk about stuff like that. You know, he's been good for us, though. So Lamar, he removed himself completely from, and he, he said, I don't know what those guys go, got going on up there. You got to talk to them about that. Uh, and we've seen in the past where Lamar has given praise to players, possibly getting ready to be free agents. Oh, I love this guy. Oh, yeah, we should bring him on. Oh, yeah, I, I hope we can keep him. Oh, man, yeah, he needs to play for us. Da -da 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 -da. But we, and, and he's done it with coaches, too. He always talks about James Urban and all these press conferences, all their conversations and stuff. But here with Greg Roman, he, like, removed himself. He was like, no, I, mm -mm, nope, that, that, hey, he, he's a great guy, great coach, glad he's here for us, da, 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 but that ain't got nothing to do with me, that's up to EDC, that's up to Bashadi. That that's up to Harvey, that, that's them, they handle that, so I just thought it was interesting, and then even the way, he, he made sure he was very careful with his words, very careful with his words, and but he sort of tiptoed around it, cause it seemed like when, when when the reporter asked, it seemed like Lamar Jackson. Okay, oh yeah, he's a great coach. He's, a, he's like, okay, hey, tell us more. But then he was like, oh wait a minute, but, but yeah, I don't know what they got going on. That's that's all them. So just thought that was very interesting. So we'll see what happens if anything does happen uh, with Greg Roman. Now again, Greg Roman has not been a bad overall offensive coordinator um he can be situationally bad he can be situationally questionable um in in those critical moments of the game uh the situational play calling it can be very suspect at times 
And he just, he reminds me of an offensive version of Dean Pease. Because Dean Pease was not a bad uh, defensive coordinator. He wasn't. Dean Pease was not a bad defensive coordinator. But situationally, that's where he messed up. That's where he failed the team. So, it's just, it's important that Bashadi and EDC, whatever they're going to do, um, it they, they got to make some big time decisions. Because we know that they are the head honchos when it comes to the Ravens organization. Um, but you definitely want to keep your players in mind. Uh, for whatever move that you make, you want to keep your players in mind because these are the guys. Yeah, you make the big time calls and all that. You make the signings, the hirings, the firings, the trades, the drafts, all that stuff. Um, but you want to make sure you keep your players in mind because those are the guys that are on the field. Those are the guys that have to execute whatever game plan is uh, is created. Those are the guys that have to make it happen uh, on the field. So you want to make sure you do right by them and you do really what's best for them. You have to do what's best for them. It's important that EDC and Bashadi they realize that. It's important that Harbaugh, as the head coach, as the leader, as the motivator, that he realizes that as well. And it's so important that he does what's best for the team, but not necessarily best for himself. They need to get uncomfortable. They need to get uncomfortable. We know that everybody got hurt this year. We get that. Trust us, we do. But even beyond this year, even before this year, the Ravens just have not been getting the job done. They haven't been getting it done. So they really need to do what's best for business. Again, I've said this before. If John Harbaugh can't do what's best for business, then Bashadi and EDC, they have to step in and do it. They, they have to. They have to. Or else this franchise, they're going to be stuck. They're going to be stuck. There used to be a time, and I know football is different. The game has changed a lot. But there used to be a time where Ravens, people would be scared to play the Ravens. And I know this is the Ray Lewis days and stuff, and Ed Reed and Suggs or younger Suggs. And, like, teams used to really like, oh, man, we got to play Ravens. Oh, boy. Like, where Ravens used to actually be intimidating. Used to be like, Whoa. But they don't have that anymore. They don't, they don't have that fear factor anymore. A lot of people are like, oh, we got to play the Ravens? Oh, okay, this should be fun. They need to get that back. Starts up front. It starts up front. But even before it starts up front, it starts up top. This front office got to get it right this offseason. They have to. And if they don't, it's going to be a repeat of all the same stuff. Ever since Ray Lewis left, since Ed Reed got kicked out, they've won two playoff games. Two. One with Flacco, one with Lamar. They've won two. They've had some teams. Remember that, that, that 2014 team? They, oh, they, they, they had a little squad, man. They weren't 2012 or anything like that, but they had a squad. Had a team. And then you look at 2019, of course. They definitely had a squad then. Then even 2020. They had that squad there too. This year, 2015 and this year, okay, everybody got hurt. But you still had opportunities. And that's been the thing. It, that's been the thing with the Ravens. There's been a lot of opportunities missed based off of a lot of bad decision making over the years. Even a lot of them seasons where they just missed the playoffs by that much. These Ravens, they fight. They fight. They fight hard. But moral victories ain't going to get it done. Moral victories are not going to equate to playoffs. Moral victories are not going to equate to Super Bowls. Moral victories are not going to be enough to finish the job. So Ravens got to get past this whole, oh, moral victory. Oh, well, we, we, we tried. Oh, well, well, we gave it all. Oh, well, it was great effort. And that's nice. Those are great qualities for sure. But that's not enough. Team Keep It Clean, I appreciate y'all. And just like the Ravens are when it comes to being in the playoffs, due to so many different reasons, we out.